Yeah, this is a special place. I'm super excited. Bison Nation, there's there's nobody better. The atmosphere that we have on Saturdays is is unbelievable. So I can't wait. I'm I'm crazy excited. I can't put it into words. I'm just I'm just really excited. That is the new BMOC, big man on campus at NDSU. Easton Sick talking about his first home game. I knew I had to do that. With me tonight for our Bison Breakdown segment, our very own Beth Hull. Are you going to throw anything at me? Are you still mad at me? BMOC. He makes just... this stuff up himself, folks. No, trust me. Honestly, honestly, Dan Fouts, he used to say, though, with a expletive word, it was B something else, MOC. He'd wear the hat around all the time when he's playing for the Chargers. That's Easton Sick. He's our new Dan Fowler. What do you want me to say? He's, he's, he is. He certainly is. And he handles it with grace and dignity, too. So that's nice. <laughs> so I was just going to say, do you want to, like, talk about these new helmets and how great of a recruiting tool they are? Are do you, you going yell to yell at me first? Me, or... or can I talk about it wow. here? All right. So, yeah, no. NDSU introducing the Harvest Bowl helmets today, or not today, this week. Uh, they're going to debut them this weekend. It's exciting. It's, you know, something that. Oddly enough, is a big part of recruiting these days, which I have a problem with. Um, but they're really cool. They're they're still fairly traditional. It's the same logo. It's uh you you know it's traditional still, but they do have the the harvest bull nod there to the tradition of uh, agriculture in North Dakota. Honestly, I love them. I think they're super hot. But I want yeah, to the coach Kleiman, uh, as you mentioned, talked in the presser about the impact that this has on recruiting young men. I want your initial response when you heard that the presser on Monday. <laughs> well, we got in the car after the presser, and I, I went a little berserk. I just think that's absolutely – I think it's fine that schools are choosing to do this, and I think it's cool and it's fun. Um, but the fact that kids are asking and that it comes up actually – as to what's the uniform situation like with recruits these days, what a sense of entitlement. That just blows my mind personally. I can't imagine if I'm not a parent, but I can't imagine if I had somebody coming into my home and offering to give my child an education and money to go continue to live his dream and my kid had the audacity to ask, how many helmets do I get to wear? I would backhand him so quick. Well, not even that. And you said it best on the car ride home. It was me, you, and Alex. When you're like, yeah, the coach is going to pull out four championships ring on his fingers. You're going to ask me yeah. about jerseys? You ask me I how mean... many jerseys you get? I'm going to go, I'm sorry. What would you say, son? What would you say? Like... Which, by the way, I walked up to Coach Kleiman after the press, and I said, Coach, you've got to be kidding me. Kids aren't really sitting down at the recruiting table. Yeah. And asked him, he said, Berg, I talked to Scott Frost. He's the O coordinator at Oregon. He goes, we, we're pulling kids from SC, UCLA, all over the country because we have 10 different kinds of jerseys. These were neon yellow. <laughs> right. That's insane. I think they're going to look sharp, though. They're wearing them with the they gold are. jerseys. They're 19-0 and 0 in the gold jerseys. Uh, so hopefully, you know, the green helmet doesn't ruin that trend. But, uh, you know, it, it's going to be fun. And most importantly, Easton Stick gets his first start at home, which I'm really excited to I'm, see. Let's, let's talk about the game because, you know. Oh, there's a game going Western on. It's Illinois. not all about helmets. <laughs> Western Illinois never lost in the Dome. They got a stud QB that can sling not, it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not only has Western Illinois never lost in the Dome, the home team has never won in this series which I think is super interesting. Just a weird fact. I mean, you know. There's a weird, it's not as weird of a vibe as the USD game because that had a really weird thing to it. But this game's got a weird vibe to it where they've lost two straight now. You know they're hungry. They're, they're, this is for their playoff life. They're going to do whatever it takes to win. Your thoughts on what's coming up this Saturday? I think it's a really interesting dynamic just because I think NDSU does best when they know what to expect more. There's a lot of familiarity between Western Illinois and NDSU. The coaching staffs overlap a lot. They know a lot of each other. They know a lot about each other. There's a lot of returning guys on this team. And I think when you look at the SDSU game, that's a game NDSU knew what to expect, and they dominated. Tim Polisek had that thing dialed up. <laughs> yeah. And I think that we can – I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing that again because this was a tough game last year. This was the first game I ever traveled with the Bison to for Valley News Live, and, and it was tough. I thought there was going to be a blame Beth Jinx <laughs> hashtag because they were going to they were going to lose it, but they, they of course, pulled it out. So I, I think it's going to be a tough game. I think it's going to be exciting. I'm really excited – to see what they can dial up. So your thoughts on, you know, the one thing that jumps out to me is obviously the running game. I mean, King Fraser had a great game. Easton Stick, the running game really exploded last week. <laughs> can we anticipate to see that again this week? I think they have to make it work. I talked to Coach Kleiman a lot about that perimeter game, that, that spreading out the offense that uh, is something that they've been able to do and focused on doing since bringing Easton Stick into this offense. 
Um, I'm interested to see if that can make an effect because Western Illinois shut down the run last year. That's the only team that showed John Crockett what was up. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he, he was a force to be reckoned with last year, and they just had his number. He just could never quite break free. Now, I think the offensive line is extremely dialed up this year. I think they're ready to go. Talk to Coach Riley this week. He said it's just clicking for these guys. They're getting the big picture. Um, everybody's kind of played in everybody's position, which just builds comfortability, and it just builds uh, another, another level of communication that I think is something to look for. i got a minute left, so I want, to, I want to get your opinion on this. How much of that do you think it is because Easton Stick is now the guy, and it's sort of like, look, we know that oh, we've got to run, and it gives us more reps. And when you and I have talked about this running back by committee thing, like when you're playing football, you they need to get into it. a momentum. They don't yeah. want it. Tim Polisek even has said that he maybe even feels a little bad that he hasn't been able to, to ride one guy, but no one's really shown it until King last week. And it was because the coaches all but called him out and said, yep. you know, it's now or never. And, and he answered the call. Hopefully he can hold that fire. He said it on the, the radio broadcast after the game. He told Jeremy Jorgensen that, you know, I found a fire inside me that just maybe wasn't there earlier in the season. That's fantastic. That's what we want. And I think it permeated. That was the most physical football game I've seen from NDSU this year, which you, you know I, I like to see that. So Beth Hool, great That's job. Nice. She'll be on the sidelines uh, this Saturday. I want to remind you, 1.30 p.m., the Farmers Union Insurance Bison football pregame show kicks off here on Valley News Live. Then 2.30 will be the game. Beth Hool, Brian Sean, and Lee Timmerman bringing it to you. Beth, keep that helmet right I'm there. Taking I'm taking it right back, back to my house. Stay with us. When we come back, I'm going to share with you Sticky some pretty fingers. shocking sound bites from our FBI director about Syrian refugees. Much more coming up.